Hello everyone, I'm Joaquim Burgues again, and today I'm solving a couple of exercises from your list on symplectic geometry. So, here we have it. The exercises will be number 9 and 10 of your list. They are simple exercises, the, there's not much to them, they are computation exercises. Um, I'm not copying the whole statement here, but uh, you can check it in your in your problem list. So exercise number nine is about Newton's second law in just relating it to the Hamiltonian uh, formulation. So it's more like a physics exercise than a geometry one but uh, it, I think it's a motivational exercise here. So here we have Newton's second law which um, in general models any um, dynamical system that moves according to a potential energy so this can model um, the harmonic oscillator the pendulum the movement of the earth around the sun any problem that's due that has a force that's a conservative force right and the idea is to understand uh, why Ham the Hamiltonian formulation provides a generalization for this model. So we introduce the momenta. These are well the momentum from classical mechanics that you should have heard of what some time. It it's just mass of your particle times the uh, velocity of that particle. And we can have, we can define here the total energy of of our function of our system. Sorry, the this is uh, often called the mechanical energy of the system. So uh, usually you will see this expressed with velocity, but using the momenta, it's it's that simple. You just need to take the mass dividing because you have a uh, mass squared multiplying here and the phase space is uh, t star of r r3 or what is the same r6 uh, yeah i'm putting here a t star because usually momenta are thought as coordinates in the cotangent uh, bundle but that that's not very important so we have two tasks we first need to show that this mechanical energy is a preserved quantity here it's a conserved quantity by the motion and second we need to show that the Newton's second law is generalized by Hamilton's equations that I'm not, not putting here but uh, you have seen them plenty uh, during these days so uh, the first task um, to do this you can just uh, take a vector assuming that is a solution to Newton's equation of course Newton's equation does not say anything about the momenta but you can compute the momenta from the expression of the solution so you can take the vector as this and so you can compose this with the energy right so you have uh, a function from real numbers to real numbers that takes uh, a moment in time to the energy, uh, the total energy of the particle at that point in time when it's moving. So the way to show that this is constant, the easiest way for us uh, differential geometers is to derive things. So we have this composition and we derive respe with respect to time, so we need to apply the chain rule here. So. Uh, here we apply the chain rule to the part of the kinetic energy, so we have the derivative of the momentum with respect to time. Uh, here we apply the chain rule to the part of the potential energy, so we have the gradient of the potential energy times the, uh, the velocity. Alright, so now we can start replacing things here according to the definition of momentum. So, momentum. Uh, is defined as uh, mass times the velocity 
so if we take the mass dividing we get that this mass times well mass dividing doing a momentum mass under the momentum is just the velocity again so this term equals this one so we can group them out here uh, this is the the inner product uh, as always of vectors so we have here the derivative of the momentum with respect to time and the potential energy inside and the derivative of the momentum with respect to time if we substitute again is mass times the second derivative of the position with respect to time so now we have this term here and if we take another look at Newton's second law and we take this uh, adding at the side it's instead of uh, with minus sign here we know that this must be zero because Q is a solution to Newton's equation, right? So this is zero. As I said, not very complicated. As to checking that this, uh, the the Hamilton equations generalize the, um, the 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 Newton's second law. Uh, again, we use the definition of of momentum. So uh, first of all, we can check that if we take the partial derivative of this uh, function with respect to the momentum we see that what we get is just uh, the momentum itself, right? so divided by m so we can take a look here uh, so as, as I just said the derivative, the partial derivative of the energy with respect to the moment well to a particular coordinate of momentum is that momentum divided by the mass but that is uh, precisely the derivative of Q with respect to this so this is the first um, the first uh, part of the uh, Hamiltonian formulation now I just realized that there is a little um, uh, well a typo uh, misconception from, from my part I put these i's because I'm assuming that there are several coordinates and there may also be several particles so each of the particles should have its own mass but well we, if you apply this correction the same argument stands now second equation in the Hamiltonian formulation is just um, another way to express Newton's second law so we start with the second equation of Hamilton's formulation which is the derivative of one momentum with respect to t if we substitute the expression of the of the momentum the definition of the momentum we get the second derivative of the position with respect to t so the acceleration of, of the eighth particle in the ith coordinate multiplied by the mass we apply Newton's second law so this is minus the ith coordinate of the gradient so this is minus partial of the of the potential energy with respect to q sub i and this is precisely minus the partial derivative of the total energy with respect to q sub i so we have the two equations of Hamilton's formulation uh, yeah, I think this is a very simple exercise so now moving to exercise 10 we have the expression for the Poisson bracket uh, this is the proper definition oh yeah sorry um, we are assuming that we only have one dimension so we have one position and one momentum uh, so the easiest possible um, uh, setting for, for a physical problem in this case and we are asked to compute several things uh, with respect to this Poisson bracket so first of all we need to check that this defines a Lie algebra on this space of functions alright so uh, in order to check this we need to check the properties of the bracket uh, there are several things that are easy to, to check here and others that are not, not as easy So to prove that this is a Lie algebra, we need to check uh, three conditions, right? We need to check that the bracket is linear in each of the components, so the linearity. 
we need to check anti-commutativity, and finally we need to check the Jacobi identity. The first two properties are quite easy to, to prove. I just showed here the, the reasoning for each of them, but uh, I think that it's quite easy for, for you to do. Uh, I must mention that in the case of the bilinearity I just checked for the first component, but the argument is identical for the second one. And finally, for the Jacobi identity, here we need to be very careful because, uh, sorry, uh, in the case of the Jacobi identity, there is not really an intuitive argument, so one really needs to patiently compute this whole expression here to expand all these brackets. I will show you in a second how that looks. Mm, heads up, it's not not really nice, but uh, yeah, one r really needs to be patient, and one finally gets it. If you do this, I will hide my my face here. If one does this, we get with well, we get this terrible expression here. There are twenty four uh, components in in this expression, but if you get here and you get here with a reasonably co correct computation uh, what is left is, is that simple, right? We ju you just need to play the game of let's find the pair of each one of the elements so to make things quite clear I colored the pairs here so for instance color red goes with color red and you can check this, this is partial of f with respect to p here, partial of h with respect to q, this is here, uh, second partial of g with respect to both coordinates, it's here, and the signs are opposite, so these two cancel with each other. And you will find that you can play this game with all the terms in this sum, and you just find the pairs, and you get that this is zero. So, not the most beautiful exercise in the world, but uh, at the same time not very complicated All right. so the next part of the exercise presents us with the quadratic forms this Q2 of R um, this is a, actually a very simple set these are the degree 2 homogeneous polynomials in R and if you think carefully about this, this is just equivalent to R3 because the base is this one that's presented to us in, in the statement of the exercise, right? One half of P squared, one half Q squared, P times Q. So they are asking us to check that this is a Lewis-Hoop algebra. We are, it's quite easy to, to see that this is a linear subspace to begin with. So the part of E and plus already clear so we need to check that the, the this is closed with, with respect to the Poisson bracket and the way that I find really intuitive for this exercise to, to think of us is um, just prove first the product rule here uh, this can be seen as well this is the line rule right this can be seen as uh, each component behaves as a uh, derivative with respect to the function here. And this is also true in the second component, right? If you if you just uh, play the anti-commutativity game here, you, you get the same expression for the other coordinate with the... Well, for the other component with the same signs. So what I'm just going to do is compute the products, the possible products, of the elements of the base and I said that this is enough why why do I, do I say this? I, I said this because if the product of each pair of elements in the base belongs to the same set then all of the possible products here belong because the Poisson bracket is bilinear so you have this closeness condition so the exercise is actually easy enough. So, 
I go on to compute these all the possible products which are <coughs> sorry which are just three of them I will move my face up here so F1 uh, Poisson bracket with F2 these are these two here you just apply the linear B linearity here so you take the one half out you apply the Leibniz rule so Q squared you can take the two outside so uh, this cancels with one of, of the one halves and you leave one P inside you can apply the same for Q so you have P times Q the Poisson bracket of P and Q and if you compute this this is just one so here you have it um, the other ones are, are just applying the same right you have this and this and the trick is that this bracket is zero and this bracket is zero because the Poisson bracket of one function with itself must always be zero so here we have it this is one and this is minus one because of anti-commutativity so here you have the results all three of them are not just um, uh, quadratic forms they are elements of the base <laughs> right or uh, two times elements of the base or minus two times elements of the base so this is very easy and in the ex in the exercise we are al also asked to sh to compute the structural constants so moving back here so the structural constants are just the real numbers that realize your Poisson structure in, in your um, in expressing this with, with the base so if you take a look at this there there should be a lot of numbers in this expression I believe there should be 27 right so because you have three options for I three for J and three for K but actually there are a lot of them that are redundant right because you have this anti-commutativity so in practice you only need nine of them you have the three options for k and three options for uh, numbers i and j that are with i strictly less than j because if you reverse the order you already have something so if i compute them uh, well i actually don't need to do, an to do anything i just go up see what the result of my computations were right uh, here I have everything so f1 times f2 is f3 so f1 times f2 is just once f3 easy you do the same for each one of them and you get these expressions here finally the last part of the exercise uh, has something to do with dynamics so we define here the Hamiltonian vector field just as in symplectic geometry actually this is very similar way to define this and first of all we need to give the expression and then we will compute an example of this so when I am faced with this kind of problem even if it's really easy I always do the same because uh, it's the easiest for me I write a generic expression for my vector field y super f this is a times partial with respect to p b times partial with respect to q this is a vector field and now I apply this generic expression here I compute this and compare so if uh, we apply this vector field to this function we get this expression where I, I, I didn't mention this but a and b are functions again so here you have this and if you compute the Poisson bracket well, well this is the definition so you have this expression now we can compare this and this so partial of g with respect to p what does this appear where sorry where does this appear well here so a must be minus partial of f with respect to q right and with b the same this it must be partial of f with respect to p and if you look at this this is the same thing as always this is the Hamiltonian system that we all know and love from 
all this uh, subject of symplectic geometry. So the final part of the exercise is to compute this in a particular case. So we take the, the two elements of the base from before, right, f1 and f2, and we are asked to check that this time t flow is linear. This means linear with respect to the initial conditions. So, if we compute this, well, you just apply the formula from the last slide, right? You get this vector field, you can put this into a system of ODEs, and this system, you know it quite, quite well actually, this is the ODE of the circular motion, so the flow, the time t flow for P and Q. It's only this matrix, this rotation matrix, multiplied by the initial conditions P and Q. And this matrix is, a, is actually a symplectic matrix because in dimension 2 the mm, symplectic matrices are the same as the special group of matrices, which are the matrices that have determinant 1, and in this case, of course, this has determinant 1. Uh, so that's it. This is obviously linear because you're multiplying a matrix by the initial condition, so this is always linear. And I just wanted to observe that this, all, all of this uh, makes sense because this is the uh, generic expression of the kinetic energy, as we saw in the last exercise. And if you, well, with mass 1, right? And if you look at this, this is a particular case of the elastic energy, right? With the k equal to one half here. So this vector vector uh, field here is just the the OD of the harmonic oscillator. So this flow is the flow of the harmonic oscillator. So this is not surprising at all. So. I think that's everything for, for these uh, exercises. I, th I think they were really easy. But if you need anything else, if you have any question, please contact us. And uh, I hope that everything goes well.